hope you're well and I hope you're looking after yourself and you've had a good week. Now in last week's vlog I said to you that this week's vlog is about when things go wrong in boating. Oh sorry am I keeping you up? And um, uh, so this week's vlog is about that because things didn't go according to plan last week but good things came out of it so I'll share the story with you. So when we left the wonderful farmer Jason we needed to get some shopping, we were running low on supplies. So we were going to take Narrowboat Alice Grace all the way back down the 40 foot drain to the end where Ramsey is, moor the boat in Ramsey and there was a big supermarket close by, well there is a big supermarket close by, it's still there, and stock up and then we would go and find somewhere to moor. So we estimated really the journey would take about an hour to get to Ramsey. going down the 40 foot drain we pass some boats that are moored outside Bill Fair Marina and one of the boats suddenly the duck hatch opened and out popped a uh, silver haired man long silver hair very wise face and he asked us several questions in a really kind way about our boat and told us how we should safely move the boat round at the bottom of the basin. So another boater has just said, have you been down here before? To which I replied, no. And he asked us the length of the boat and I said 60 foot. So he said, when you get down to the end, head into the L. So you can turn. But he did look very, well, hopeful when we said the length of the boat. We're committed now, so we shall do this. Now this green stuff in the water is called duckweed and like its name suggests it does feed the ducks and the swans but also humans can eat it, it's a great source of protein apparently and it can be used as a biofuel. Uh, I don't think I'll try duckweed yet. I'll try and get down here and do a bit of shopping first. So here we are approaching Ramsey Basin. We wanted to turn the boat in the opposite direction as we moored it, ready to go back after the shop. It's a good job that other boater tipped us off on this because we really wouldn't know how to approach this. But now we're looking for the L, the corner of the L shape.
so we were wedged well and truly wedged I don't think we quite made it into the corner of the L um, but whatever had happened we couldn't move our boat <laughs> rather than go, go what are you looking at rather than go down the gunnels of the boat I um, took the barge pole through the boat So then we tried pulling, both pulling the ropes, the centre line rope from the side of the basin. So we are completely rushed. Just try to take the centre line from the other side, but we can't turn it round. <clears throat> However, it's like the story of the enormous turnip. If you have ever read the story of the enormous turnip, you will know that two people are not going to pull up the enormous turnip. Well, it was the same with Alice Grace. So I go back into the boat to try the barge pole. Meanwhile, out of nowhere, suddenly, all these people, these really wonderful, kind people from the street of Ramsey, going about their weekend business, you know, getting shopping, as we were trying to do, suddenly emerged. And whilst I was in the boat with a barge pole, I could hear all these voices, and suddenly the boat just starts to move. Wow. So about six men have come to help us pull the boat, and now we have finally moved the boat into a position where we're not stuck. But it does mean we were going to have to reverse all the way back along that stretch of just come because we just can't physically turn the boat. Now we had to reverse back to find a good place to turn. switch off the engine because as we're reversing all these reeds and weeds I've just got caught in the prop and we can't move anymore so we need to clear the weed hatch don't worry sir we'll get there that's at least a week's veg I think you know, when I joked about duckweed, it has really got me thinking recently as I've been on my walks of Zephyr that um, about the plants that I pass by, you know, about um, whether or not you can eat them, about whether or not what their uses are, and just learning a little bit more about some of the plants. And here's some of the plants that I have filmed this week. the um, annual bastard cabbage which I have renamed a the ABC cabbage which I also now call the alphabet cabbage just because I think it deserves a better name 
I really wondered whether or not you could eat that because apparently it's invasive. So of course, who do you ask but Foraging Fran from Floating Out Boats because she is the queen of narrowboat foraging. And I emailed her and she was really kind. She got back to me and um, she hasn't eaten it before but she recommended putting it in a stir fry. And then that led me to get in contact with Mark at Wild Foods. He's got an amazing website. I'll put a link to it in the description on my vlog. And I had a one-to-one -one Zoom call with him all about how you can forage, what you can eat along canal sides, and, um, you know, the invasive species, how you can eat them and safely eat them. Do you fancy some Himalayan balsam? Let's do the magic of vlogging. Wow, well, look at that. Himalayan balsam right behind me. Okay, so here are some seed pods. It's like a really nice salady leaf, like a, a maybe a rockety flavour leaf, I think. it's time to sit back relax and enjoy a mindful cruise you're gonna to have to come back next week to see if I'm still alive look after yourself take care and please come and join me next week bye My boat was a turnip, you see, the day it got wedged in Ramsey, for when two gave a pull it did not budge at all, until two was timesed by a three. With six Big Alice was freed, teamwork the dream work indeed. To show that I'm grateful I'll cook up a plateful of balsam with a side of duckweed. <laughs>